13 books and that probably cost me about 20 quid. I mean, I don't know why more people don't buy books second hand. Welcome to my channel, my name is Sarah and I love to talk about books. And today I'm finally getting my act together to bring you the next part of my book haul. Um, this was supposed to be like, I don't know, like a summer or lockdown book haul that's taken me a while to get around to this next part. The books today were all bought secondhand between kind of the end of May and kind of the middle of July-ish. And like I said, they were all bought secondhand. The ones I'm going to talk to you about today were, I think, all bought from charity shops. I love buying books secondhand, first of all, because I'm usually pretty skint and I can't afford to buy new books all the time, but also because I buy them from charity shops, there's a bit of a feel-good element there because I'm giving to charity, and there's also an environmental aspect as well because it's part of that whole kind of reduce, reuse, recycle cycle um, as well. So instead of books just getting chucked out, they're getting passed on to someone like me who will love them as well. So the first two books that I got, in fact these were probably before May, I think these might have been just at the start of lockdown. One of my local supermarkets has a um, like a, a, a book table for charity. I actually don't know what charity it's for but the books are normally pretty rubbish and um, to be honest the quality of donations isn't high but once every now and again I will see one that catches my eye and they're really cheap I think they're like a pound each so I grabbed these two and so the first one that I picked up was How Not To Be A Boy by Robert Webb um, if you don't know who Robert Webb is in fact there's a picture of him on the back he is part of the Mitchell and Webb comedy duo over here in the UK and he's one of the guys behind the phenomenal show Peep Show. Um, I think he's quite funny, I mean really I've only really seen him in Peep Show but he also did, um, what was it, Let's Dance for Comic Relief or something years ago, I think he did Flash Dance and it was hilarious so I think he's quite a funny guy, I don't know a lot about him but this book is part memoir so I'm sure I'll learn a lot more. It's part memoir and part an examination of the um, stereotypes of what it is to be a man and how crap they are basically so I'm really looking forward to this one. The next was, ugh, this is so bash, like this is sometimes the quality of the books you get on that table and ordinarily I actually wouldn't buy a book of this um, quality but this one really caught my eye. This is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. It's one of those ones that's kind of been on the periphery of my um, awareness, but I've always been a little bit dubious about picking it up because I had kind of classed it as a fantasy. It's also the first book in a series, um, so I thought it was probably okay to take a gamble on a book in this bad condition because I wasn't sure I would like it and I've said before that I'm not a big reader of series, so you know, I think actually these are books are at like 50p, so it wasn't exactly much of a gamble. <laughs> but I do think I'm really going to like this, it's set in the Russian wilderness where um, it's winter pretty much most of the year and where people believe in the spirits of the home and the forest to protect them and keep them from evil. And the main character, um, Vasya, um, really enjoys hearing the stories of these spirits and um, enjoys honouring them. But with the arrival of a stepmother who is quite devout and orthodox um, her and her family are forbidden to honour these spirits and um, Vastya is being groomed for either marriage or the convent. But bad things start to happen and Vastya is put in the position where she has to use a gift that she's kept hidden from the people she loves in order to protect them. So I think that sounds like just the touch of fantasy that I will enjoy. Um, so yeah, looking forward to this one. The next three books I picked up were from the Cancer Research Shop on um, the Isle of Bute in Rossi um, and these were all a pound each. So first one is, oh, I haven't taken the price tags off of any of them, so proof, it was definitely a cherry shop purchase. But this is Burial Rights by Hannah Kent, again a book that has always kind of been on my radar, it was really um, talked about when it first came out but I just never 
um, got around to either fitting it onto my TBR or finding a copy. But now I do. And it's based on a true story. It's set in Iceland in 1829 and is about Agnes, who has been sent to an isolated farm to await her execution after being charged with the murder of her former master. But as the farmer's family and um, a local priest find out more about her story, there is um, a lot more to it than um, has been reported. So that sounds really intriguing and the fact it's based on a true story as well always adds a certain something to a book. The next one was Born Lippy by Jo Brand. Um, again, if you're not in the UK, she is a very prominent comedian over here. I love Jo Brand. Um, she's unabashedly herself, which you know is admirable in any situation, but particularly in the comedy world, which is very male dominated, particularly when she came into it back in the 80s. Um, so this is kind of almost like a compliment to Robert Webb's book because it's part memoir and part examination of what it is to be a woman in today's society. Jo Brand is sarky, she's brutal, she's funny as fuck, and um, I'm pretty sure the book is going to be the same. And then the last book I picked up, I don't really know why I picked it up, um, it's called I Am Here Now, A Creative Mindfulness Guide and Journal by The Mindfulness Project. I don't think it's got an actual named author, no, because it's not really a book, it's just um, lots of different mindfulness exercises that you can do, which to be honest, knowing me, I will probably not actually do. But it was only a quid for an aspirational purchase. And then next, um, I picked up some books in the Oxfam bookshop on Byers Road in Glasgow. This was the day where I went to Waterstones with my birthday voucher and bought a lot of the books that I mentioned in um, my previous book haul video, which I will link below, where I bought actual new books, which is a very <laughs> rare occurrence for me. Um, so I picked up these two. Now I often find with the Oxfam bookshops, is that, you know, in the context of them being secondhand books, they are actually quite pricey. My favourite place to get secondhand books is the Red Cross book sale that's held in my town on a Wednesday, um, but I don't know if that's going to be continuing. I'm pretty sure it's been closed throughout lockdown, but the hall in which it was housed um, has been bought over by a community project. So I'm really, really hoping that they will keep that book sale going, but I know it takes up like a whole hall of that, um, community centre so I don't know whether they will but the books in there are super cheap and um, so I will go in with a fiver and come out with like a massive stack of books. Um, that's the kind of secondhand books that I love um, but the Oxfam bookshop like these were, no prices on any of these? Yeah like these were £4 each um, which I think is a bit steep for a secondhand book but it it's all going to charity so I really shouldn't quibble. Uh, the first book that I picked up from it was The Peculiar Sadness of Lemon Cake and this is by Amy Bender and when I bought this I hadn't yet read The Butterfly Lampshade and I, actually it was only when I was preparing for this haul video that I realised that this is the same author and I really like The Butterfly Lampshade so I'm looking forward to this one. I've heard it mentioned quite, a f well not quite a few times, a couple of times um, on the What Should I Read Next podcast. And it's about Rose who can taste emotions in food. And she discovers this when she um, eats her mother's uh, lemon and chocolate cake, which to me that actually does not sound like a nice combination, but whatever. Um, and her mother is like quite a go-getter type, quite perky, but in this cake she can taste um, loneliness and desperation. And as she develops this skill that she has, it unearths some family secrets. So that sounds really intriguing. The next one is a book that I think pretty much everyone knows, um, When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. So at the age of 36 and about to complete a decade of training to become a neurosurgeon, Paul developed inoperable um, lung cancer. And so this is his memoir of his journey towards death. Um, it's also looking at the things that were going on in his life at the time. He'd become a father. Um, 
I know this is a really, really emotional book to read and actually um, Kalanithi didn't get to finish it. He passed away before it was completed. Um, but it also looks at things like the doctor-patient relationship in relation to death and dying and what it is that makes life worth living. So I know this is going to be a tough and emotional read. I'll make sure I've got the tissues ready, but it's one that I've really wanted to get to for a while. And these next books were also from an Oxfam bookshop. Um, this time was on a, a wee shopping trip that, with my mum. So these were from the Oxfam bookshop in Royal Exchange Square in Glasgow City Centre. And the first one was Small Fry by Lisa Brennan Jobs. She is the daughter of Steve Jobs and he, he basically abandoned her during childhood. He was hardly ever there. And it was only old when she got older that he took an interest in her, but he could be quite cold and quite critical as well. I don't really know anything about Steve Jobs. I'm not interested in him. Um, but what I am interested in is um, parenting and early childhood experiences and how they impact on people's lives. So this one sounds like it's gonna be really interesting. And then the next one I picked up was Christine Mangan's Tangerine. Now I mainly wanted to read this because it is set in Morocco, which is a country I love. I um, honeymooned in Marrakesh, but I really have always wanted to go back because I feel like I didn't really get enough of either the city or the country on that trip. But this book is about two estranged friends who meet by chance um, in Tangier and rebuild their strange relationship. Alice is in Morocco because of her husband's job, but she is struggling to adjust to the new country. And Lucy, her friend, really builds her up and gets her to embrace the country that bit more. But soon Alice feels the familiar aspects of control and the feeling of smothering that she has in her friendship with Lucy. And then her husband disappears and Alice starts to question everything, her relationship with Lucy, her move to the country and even her own state of mind. I don't really know where this book is going to take me, but I think that exploration of dysfunctional female relationships is really really interesting and of course because it's set in Morocco as well so another good find and then on that same shopping trip um, me and my mum went into the shelter charity shop on Union Street and I picked up these the first of which is David Mitchell's Cloud Atlas for years I was sure I had a copy of this book, so it's one that you've seen charity shops quite often but I hadn't picked it up because I thought I had a copy, but I don't. If I did, I must have unhauled it, I don't know why I would have done that because I really enjoyed David Mitchell, particularly um, Black Swan Green which I read last year I thought was a really great book. I think this is probably his most famous book, I think it's been turned into a film, does it say? No, I'm guessing if this was published after a film adaptation, it would have a horrible film adaptation cover, so it doesn't. Um, I'll need to look up and see if it does have a film. And I really, I don't know how to describe this book, so I am just going to read it from the back. It says, Six interlocking lives, one amazing adventure. In a narrative that circles the globe and reaches from the 19th century to a post-apocalyptic future, Cloud Atlas erases the boundaries of time, genre and language to offer an enthralling vision of humanity, humanity, oh, humanity's will to power and where it will lead us. Now, <laughs> having just read John Boyne's um, A Traveller at the Gates of Wisdom, which had a very similar sounding premise, um, and coming out of reading The Hearts Invisible Furies, which I absolutely loved, and then into A Traveller at the Gates of Wisdom, which I really did not love, um, this is another one that probably based on that blurb I wouldn't have picked this up if it wasn't for the fact that it was a David Mitchell book so I, I mean I'm dubious and it's quite a biggie um but I will read it and hopefully he does a better job at um crossing genres and themes and things than John Boyne has and then the next book I picked up was The Snow Child by Owen Ivy I think you pronounce um, her name and actually this is a purchase of a book I have already read because I read it as an audiobook uh, about I don't know 
nine, eight, nine years ago. I loved it. And um, when I saw this cover, which I'm just oh, lovely, um, I just couldn't resist owning a physical copy as well because I definitely this is one that I would love to reread. So this is about um, homesteaders in Alaska in the 1920s. Jack and Mabel are new arrivals and they're struggling to set up their homestead. Jack's having to work really hard to do it and Mabel is feeling lonely and isolated and is still mourning the loss of a baby from um, earlier in their life together. And one day in a kind of uncharacteristic bit of fun they make a child out of snow. In the morning um, that child has gone but in its place is the arrival of a young girl called Faina. She's wild and somehow survives alone in the wilderness and I think over the years um, she only turns up during the winter but over that time Jack and Mabel really come to love her but she isn't what she seems and this is kind of I think it might be a folk tale retelling um, there's magical realism in here and the writing is just really really beautiful I also hadn't realized how young um, Owen Ivy was when she wrote this she looks about 12 um, because it's written with a really mature voice actually um, yeah so I think I'll be putting this on my 2021 TBR for a reread in the winter and then also in a charity shop in Union Street, um, I can't actually remember what charity shop it was and the books don't say. Um, I think it might have been an independent charity. But I picked up these two, uh, the first of which is Dolly Alderton's Everything I Know About Love. And um, this won't be the first time that I have bought a book from a charity shop only to realise that I already own it but the version I own of this is on my Kindle and I would prefer to have the um, physical copy and considering like I don't think this has been read, the spine's not cracked, it's in pretty good condition even if you add my two copies together they're still cheaper than buying it new. I really like Dolly Alderton, she's a journalist and um, I know her through her really great podcast that she does with Pandora's sites called The High Low and in that podcast they talk a lot about books I've got so many recommendations from that but they also talk about lots of other pop culture and current events as well so they will often be flagging up um, pieces in things like um, The New Yorker or um, other kind of news outlets to read um, they talk about things with a real maturity and I just think they're great, they're very posh and I cannot tell their voices apart. I've been listening to that podcast for like a year and I still couldn't tell you who's talking at any given time but they are really really good to listen to. I definitely recommend the podcast. This is her memoir. I think she's slightly younger than me so this is a memoir about young adulthood so I'm probably a little bit too old for it but like I said I love her and I think she talks a lot about dating and being single and you know I'm single and if I ever ever mm, uh, feel like put myself back out into the dating pool I might get something from this anyway and then the last book for this haul you'll be glad to know is um, The Tiger's Wife by Taya I, oh dear I should have looked up how to pronounce this Taya Obrecht I'm not sure why I picked this up actually but it is on my Goodreads TBR so at one point I must have um, heard a review or something about it that piqued my interest uh, and the back of the book is one of those annoying ones that doesn't really tell you anything oh my lights are not helping here um, it's just a quote from the book and then loads of um, people gushing over it from reviews <laughs> if you saw my recent book memes video <laughs> I know I'm not alone in hating that. Like, if you're trying to sell me a book, tell me what it's about. So I had to look on Goodreads to find out what this book was about. So I'll just grab my phone. In a Balkan country mending from years of conflict, Natalia, a young doctor, arrives on a mission of mercy at an orphanage by the sea. By the time she and her lifelong friend Zora begin to inoculate the children there, she feels age-old superstitions and secrets gathering everywhere around her. Secrets her outwardly cheerful hosts have tried not to tell her, Secrets involving the strange family digging for something in the surrounding vineyards, secrets hidden in the landscape itself. But Natalia is also confronting a private, hurtful mystery of her own, the inexplicable circumstances surrounding her beloved grandfather's recent death. 
After telling her grandmother that he was on his way to meet Natalia, he instead set off for a ramshackle settlement none of their family had ever heard of and died there alone. A famed physician, her grandfather must have known he was too ill to travel. Why he left home becomes a riddle Natalia is compelled to unravel. So, I mean, sold. <laughs> so that that's another, another great book. So that is quite the haul. How many books is that? One, two... Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen books, and that probably cost me about twenty quid. I mean, I don't know why more people don't buy books second hand. I'm glad they don't because then I get the pick. But um, yeah, I think surely this should convince you if you haven't already started buying second hand books that you should. Um, I do have a whole other layer here of second hand books but I think this video is long enough I will do them in another haul whenever I get the chance and probably by then we'll have more books to add to it um, but thank you for joining me today have you read any of these books um, share your thoughts I'd love to hear them or if any of them sound like the sort of book you would like to read or a book that you would not like to read just tell me whatever your thoughts are and um, you know I love to hear them and if this is the first time you've joined me on my channel thanks very much for watching please hit subscribe and um, you'll get new bookish uploads every Saturday I love to talk about books so I'd love to have you join me and until next time bye from years of conflict Natal I'll see people's names